pyrite, or what many call fool's gold, came from the Greek word for fire because it created a spark, one that still ignites the lust of mineral collectors today. I'm Thomas Nagin, and I'm a mineral explorer. I'm the guy that supplies museums, galleries, and private collectors with world-class pieces of nature's art. Come along with us as we travel the globe in search of rare gems, crystals, and other fine minerals. It's not always easy, but it's always an adventure. In the late 70s, I heard a rumor that pyrite specimens were being saved from the smelter by local mineral dealers called Piriteros. They were selling world-class specimens in a place called La Colmena, or the Beehive. These dealers would put Lima on the mineral map, establishing Peru as the destination for pyrite and creating legendary mines that we're hoping still hold a treasure or two. guide into Pyrite's past is the stylish Julio. He's been selling just off the historic Colmena for decades. But don't let the bling fool you. While he slings a lot of Pyrite, Julio can get you anything you want, from handcrafted mineral carvings to crystal clear quartz. These two larger pieces here are going to be beautiful decorator pieces. Once they're cleaned up, they'll be really spectacular. While pyrite is the iconic Peruvian stone, ceviche is the rock star of Peruvian cuisine. This dish of raw fish is cured with citrus and one of my favorite meals in all my travels. While Julio finishes making lunch, Macias gives us a little taste of pyrite history. Though there's more competition now, it seems like a victory for the original piriteros who popularized a beautiful piece of their culture. Heck, that reminds me of another cultural icon popping up all over the world. Mmm. Ceviche. Delicioso. Mmm. Claro, hace 30 años se vendía acá en la calle, ¿no? Ajá. Pero eso fue un tiempo, ahora ya están en otro lado, ¿no? Ajá. Algunos ya lo han dejado, otros siguen haciendo su negocio, ¿no? Esa es una pieza marvelosa. Es esa, uh, ¿Qué es lo que le gusta de esa pieza? El tamaño, el frío, la combinación con el cuarzo. Ya, yeah, sí. Y uh, está, está, todos los lados están bien derechos, están muy plano todo y, todo y sano. un frío, sí, sin daño. Algo único y Eso. representa una cosa distinta de Perú, ¿no? Claro. Eh, eh... Por decir, ancestralmente, eh, por el brillo que tiene la pirita, eh, los antiguos pobladores peruanos lo empleaban como espejo. Ah, para sí. Ese es su rostro. Sí. Ah, yo sí. no sabía Ahí. eso. The mine of Mundo Nuevo is producing some of the world's best specimens. So we headed north to begin our search for top notch pyrite. But we couldn't pass up the opportunity to collect another piece of Peruvian history the story of Chan Chan. Evidence of Peru's ancient culture is reflected in these well-preserved ruins. This adobe city was established between 700 and 1400 AD, and at its peak was the largest adobe city on Earth. 
So. Where we are right now, this is one of the compounds. Uh, there are nine different buildings that compose Chan Chan, that it's supposed the residences of the elite group. So I notice there's a big platform right in the center here. Uh, well, the idea is when the people were allowed to come in, they uh, were bringing offerings, no? Let's say uh, feathers, gold, semi-precious stones, probably food, but they assume were left over there in the platform because the protocol of that time didn't allow to go straight ahead to the ruler and give it to him. This is a ceremonial center. The, the, the space indicates us that this was made on purpose to do rituals. The Chimu civilization was pioneering innovations in engineering centuries before Europe and North America. And these ruins reflect a complex political, social, and technological system that also centered around the spiritual. So this is the uh, funeral or the burial area, right? You're right. This is the place where the mummy of the main ruler was fixed, especially in the chamber in the center, because the idea is he was traveling to the afterlife and he could come back whenever he wanted. So. We assume, they said, that the body was preserved into that chamber, but not close it forever, because every certain time that mommy was out, taken out, so people could see as he was coming from the ancestors' land and he, he never died. It is very common to find that the pre-Inca culture used to bury their high ranks individuals, like lords or rulers, with all their belongings, no? And so did they find any of these artifacts, the mask um, or the gloves yes, or anything uh, like this? Yes, you can find them in certain private collections, for instance, in Chicago. We have a museum that is called the Bruning Museum. In there, Mr. Bruning collected in the early 20th century funerary masks, and there you could see them, the big size of these made oh, in gold yeah. leaf. Here you have the headdress, you know, that is decorated with feathers. Then you could see the funerary mask made in pure gold. And look at the pupils are, uh, this case, turquoise. Turquoise, wow. The wonders of Peru's past are enchanting and Chan Chan gives us the opportunity to transport ourselves to what was once a bustling pre-Incan city by the sea. For me, there's no better reflection of that rich history than the shine of pyrite. Those mountains are really tall. That is where we're headed. Huamachuco is about a three hour drive from Chan Chan and has some of the highest altitude mines in the world. Many are over 15,000 feet. These colonial towns have a whole different life at night. Colorful and festive, there's no better place to rest before heading into the mountains. So welcome to the beautiful city of Huamachuco. Right next to their modern church is the Campanaria. It was built in 1553 in honor of the passage of the great liberator of South America, Simon Bolivar. The Campanaria, like much of the rest of Huamachuco, was built on top of the old Incan rocks. The surrounding area has been inhabited by travelers since before the time of Christ. This often overlooked gem remains an important stop on the road to the almost three mile high pyrite mines. We're on our way from Huamachuco to the mine of Mundo Nuevo. Now they often stop here to get fresh trout for the miners. When working in such isolated and high altitude conditions, fresh and close food is essential. And there's one young man tasked with a job. Jorge, ¿cuántos años tienes? 19. 19 years old. Muy joven para tener tanta responsabilidad, ¿no? Claro. Usted está encargado de todo eso. Sí. Eh, uh, ¿Y cuántos uh, jaulas tiene aquí? 12. 12 jaulas. ¿Cuántos truchas están en cada jaula? 5,000. 5,000. 
¿Me, me puedes uh, llevar a, las, a sí. ver las aulas? Claro. Ok. ¿Cómo hacemos? No, ¿Usted maneja o yo manejo? Yo. yo oh, okay. <laughs> ok. It was fitting of a novel, riding in a ship named Titanic, the captain a quiet teenager, the epic beauty of the place enough to make you dizzy. It is gorgeous out here. I just wish there was more oxygen. While I caught my breath and Jorge caught lunch, I started to wonder what life of a miner would be like out here. Ah, yo nací en el campamento minero Pasto Bueno con Suso. Bueno, con el cuarzo ya tengo como 27 años trabajando todo lo que es cuarzo, todo lo que es muestras. ¿Qué le podría hacer? La, la suerte me ayudara a coleccionar cuántas piezas de todo esto lo que saco sería excelente. Pero a veces el minero es pobre porque hay que invertir acá. Yo invierto bastante. Es, un, es mi mundo vivir a esta altura solo por conseguir las mejores muestras que se pueda sacar. Es mi mundo. O sea que tú ingresas a la mina, es un gusto, es una alegría. Te quita el hambre, te quita todo. Porque eh, sacar esta estas piedras que son tan hermosas que se fue, fue formado algo increíble. Es, es una belleza. Oh, wow, that was really cool. <laughs> With grocery shopping done, we began the rugged journey, going the same direction as many explorers before us. The landscape is an ever-present reminder of the ancient adventurers that forged these paths before us. This is the road we're taking to Mundo Nuevo, and we're going to see the old Inca road that connected Cusco and Cajamarca. The Inca road system stretched nearly 40,000 kilometers, the most advanced transportation system in pre-Columbian South America. The majestic terrain of the Andes holds many secrets of the ancient civilizations. And Mundo Nuevo, or New World, is home to one of the most shining examples of Peru's natural beauty, world-class pyrite. We're here at the Mundo Nuevo mine, and I've been invited by uh, Teodosio here to come and visit the mine because fantastic minerals come out of this mine. Me imagino que has sacado muchos minerales bonitos porque yo he visto muchos. Sí, gracias a Dios, cuando empezamos, empezamos sacando muy buenos cuarzos con pirita, luego encontramos jumneritas con cuarzo, luego jumneritas con floritas y cuarzos, eh, luego chelitas y Nuevamente, ahora estamos con cuarzo con pirita. There's a mystery to the birthplace of a mineral. Often familiar, but at times as lonely as an empty horizon. An ancient vocation passed down from generation to generation of travelers seeking the treasure of discovery. Las piritas se ocurren en vetas? Sí, en vetas. Tú sigues avanzando y avanzando, donde ahí te chocas con las geodas y encuentras ese, ese tipo de piezas, o algo más chicas y más grandes. So he just, he, they just follow the pyrite veins. Uh, y las vetas de cuarzo también? También. And the quartz también. veins also. También. They follow, also follow the quartz veins. Stepping deeper into the side of the mountain gives you further respect, not only for these miners, but the ones before them. Here's a little area that they have where they're setting aside some of the specimens uh, to take out and wrap and take back to Lima. Here's a big pyrite cube. And here's a cute little uh, quartz cluster. And uh, that's what we're looking for here.
¿Quieres entrar o entra? No, uh, es que entra usted. <laughs> <laughs> es, es, muy, es muy pequeño para, para mí. This here is a very small cavity, or it's actually a large cavity, small to crawl into, that they say they're just starting to get into, and it has some newly fresh crystals that they haven't taken out yet. Let's go in and have a look. This is really tight quarters here. These miners have a really tough job. As you can see, these are really beautiful crystals here, and they're only here because they had the opportunity to grow because of this open cavity that's here. Usually the quartz veins are this solid white quartz, like here. While I was a little disappointed there was nothing for sale, this visit made clear the importance of the piriteros of the past, who created a market that saved these beautiful pieces for the world to enjoy. Still on the hunt for our own batch of pyrite, we get a tip that some may be in Juan Salon. However, things don't always go as planned. The hairpin turns and steep inclines made quick work of our clutch and brakes. So the rest of the way, we had to be pulled by cable. The capital of the Ancash region of Peru, Juarez is a popular hangout for mountain climbers looking to better their craft. And this historic city is where we hoped a mechanic could better our truck. The city of Juarez is one of the most popular tourist spots in all of Peru second only to Cusco and Machu Picchu. One of the hippest characters we met played an imperative role in the Incan economy and was almost eaten to extinction by the Spanish. I'm standing here with Atinta, who uh, stays here in the plaza, and she has an alpaca here. ¿Cuántos años tiene su alpaca? Se llama Flor Blanca? Blanca Flor. Blanca Flor, white flower. ¿Cuántos años tiene? Ah, it's 10 years old. Y lo, lo usan la, las alpacas para hacer uh, sí, uh, chompas. Chompa. Chompas. They use Goros it for making uh, sweaters and for making scarves and all different types of clothing. The alpaca was essential to growing the Incan Empire, the largest culture in pre Columbian America. late night drive on a dangerous road to a town that's at 15,000 feet is not the standard way we start out on a mineral buy. But in some towns, it's the only way to get the good stuff. We're in Wayanka, right next to the mine of Juan Salah, and it's midnight, and it's really cold. <laughs> Unlike Mundo Nuevo, Juan Sala is a functioning commercial mine where collector pieces are merely byproducts and illegal to be taken out. So we arrive under the cover of night to see what some of the miners were able to save. Early morning, no oxygen, no dinner, and low light are not ideal buying conditions. Wow, I really need something to eat. <laughs> Yeah, Julio's, uh, Julio's saying that the uh, altitude really throws him off when he's dealing for minerals here. A tip to buyers, don't feel obligated to buy. No matter how much you've gone through, just be patient and get a good deal. 
there's some really nice fluorites in this lot and the uh, the pyrites are sitting on quartz and calcite and they have some really unusual striations growth lines on them and uh, I'm trying to determine how easy they're going to clean up they say they're very fixed on their price for this uh, lot that's on the on the red plastic here which is what I'm most interested in but I can live without it really uh, because I think it's kind of expensive I could see the disappointment when they saw I was reconsidering Finally, they compromised and we were able to come to an agreement. Okay. Yeah. Okay. With all the energy and cost it took to get to this buy, my disappointment started to turn to superstition. So when in Rome, or in this case, Peru, I tried an ancient cure, magic. It's the main ingredient in any good bedtime story. The promise of mystical powers hiding in the dark corners just outside of reach. A sense of wonder, a curiosity to explore the unknown. These practitioners, brujos, can change your destiny with the utter of a word or blink of an eye. A descendant of Sikan, a culture of northern Peru dating back to 750 AD, the brujo uses the same tools of ceremonial funeral pottery to perform a cleansing similar to that of his ancestors from nearly 3,000 years ago. Sikan means temple of the moon, and standing here in the zone of the buried, inhaling essential oils under the full moon reality started to blur. The ritual uses the ancestral artifacts as a bridge connecting the past and the present, interconnecting their ancestors with their land. After two hours of this, I will say for a brief second, I thought I was going to be buried alive. But instead, I was given a gift that symbolized 3,000 years of culture. Bueno, gracias por todo. <laughs> Do you have my bag? Uh, With a renewed energy, we headed back to Lima, where some old friends had some good news. Some shiny good news. I've known Nasia since my first trips to Peru back in the 70s. He was one of the piriteros that helped save the Peruvian pyrite. Now, he and his wife are some of the most in-demand pyrite dealers in the country, with more sparkle than a disco ball. What did you think of me when you first saw me? Allá como le conocí, ¿no? Así como hippie, ¿eh? con barba larga, pelo largo, ¿no? Oh, pero diferente que los peruanos, ¿no? Ah, sí, muy diferente. While hairstyles and floral prints come and go, Nasias' rock reconcha mine continues to produce gorgeous specimens that'll always be in style. This here is uh, pretty typical of rock reconcha. It's got quartz and pyrite together, and it's really attractive as a decorator mineral. And pyrite isn't the only mineral this mine is famous for. When you're lucky, you can also find these. This is another piece they've had saved for a while. 
it's really decorative. It's a really beautiful piece, has great form. And this is manganocalcite also. And it's sitting on a little bit of pyrite sprinkled at the bottom and also some sphalerite. Josefina says it's the beauty of Rock Concha. I mean, she's probably gonna ask a lot of money for it. <laughs> Josefina tells us she has some really special things that she has set aside for her personal collection that she's gonna show us. This is the first pyrite that came out of their mind of Rak Rakancha. I might have bought more than I should have, but really you can't lose when you're buying good minerals at the right price. Thanks to the efforts of the Piriteros, pyrite has rightfully found its prominent place in many people's collections. With every glance, we can be thankful to those that preserve them for us to enjoy. If you want to see more episodes or check out our mineral collection, click the link in the description. And of course, like and subscribe to our channel. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time on Mineral Explorers.